Hi, we're the Agricultural Applications team. Um, we are in YDA 480, and this is our senior research project. My name is Rachel Foreman. I'm a senior in Agricultural Communications, um, and when I graduate, I hope to eventually find a job in the horse industry. Hello, my name is Erica Sullivan. I'm also a senior in Agricultural Communications, and I would like to do freelance writing and photography. I'm Brian Wilson, I'm a senior in Agricultural Communications, and I hope to get a job in sales and distribution. I'm Ryan Kildwer, I'm also a senior in Agricultural Communications, and when I graduate I'd like to get a job in agriculture. Our problem statement is right now there's little known about farmers' perceptions of use of agricultural applications and how they use those on the farm. From research, we wanted to discover the usability requirements of a successful mobile application. As I said, little research has been done about the technology perceptions in agriculture. Um, it's difficult to find material on the topic because a lot of companies don't want to release what they know to other people and let them advance. Um, we did find a few helpful resources about phones and other applications through our research. All right, for the first source, um, we were studying the relationship and usability, um, the relationship between usability and the success of sales. The study based its research on college students who typically purchase the, uh, their phones based on aesthetics, reputation, and price. And they didn't typically actually get to handle the phone or really discover its usability until after they had already purchased the phone. So reputation did come in with how they knew about usability. Uh, we felt though that even though agricultural demographics may differ extremely from college students, uh, some of the trends would still apply to younger farmers who are up and coming and soon be taking over the farm. The second research paper studied student attitudes. We found that there is no one perfect phone out there and it really depends on if you have needs for communication or information. However, regardless of what your needs are for the phone, um, people still wanted a streamlined functions that weren't bulky and slowing down the phone or the applications. The third study uh, was a willingness to pay study, and we found that low cost wasn't necessarily the top priority for consumers. In fact, if the phone had a higher quality feature, say a very good camera, they were more willing to pay more money for it and still more willing to buy that than a lower quality phone. Uh, speed of processing was an also a high priority that we felt would also be the same for farmers. And in our final research paper, um, Developing su Successful Applications. We found that applications are typically used when people are on the move. It doesn't necessarily happen that somebody is using the phone when they're sitting down at a desk, which is especially true at farms. They're either walking around or they're driving something, and so their full attention isn't necessarily on the application. Therefore, the tasks that applications perform should be simple and quick to complete and can also be paused in the middle of the application. Furthermore, applications should be fast and natural to use. That is, we shouldn't have to be able, we shouldn't have to read a user manual in order, order to use an application. It should be pretty easy to understand the first time you use it. So, although most of the research papers that we looked at um, are talk about phones, we can also infer that a lot of this is the same for applications on phone. Phones. We still want the applications to be high quality, not require the full attention of the user at all times while using the application, and they should be fast and natural to use. So next we'll go back to Bree with some study objective objectives. Our goals are to determine how farmers currently use mobile applications on their farms and determine what tools they would find applicable to their job setting. Um, we know there's a lot of dust and damage opportunities and we wish to see how they would deal with those. Um, to understand what features they value the most in their mobile applications and to determine what farmers want in the future of technology as well. Our methodology was initially we had a survey with our focus group that came in and in the first half of the focus group question and answers and the second half they actually had interaction with three different mobile technologies on a tablet form. Our constants are that we use the same tablets, the same screen layouts, and applications and interactive part of a focus group. Um, each member of the group had equal opportunity to speak 
and express their opinions on our application. I'm going to talk about a little bit about what we found after conducting this research. I'll begin with the findings from the survey. We ended up having 11 people in our focus groups and the average age was 25.6 but there was a wide range from 20 to 49 years old of the participants in the focus group. All 11, all 11 of them owned mobile phones but only 9 out of the 11 had smartphones and most of those were Android phones and a couple iPhones. Um, only one of the 11 had a tablet. Eight of the participants said that they used their phone for farm related tasks, but only five of them said they used applications for their business. So more of them did not use applications on the farm than those who did. The first category of questions we talked about in the focus group was the current use of mobile devices and applications. The farmers were pretty willing to download applications. They showed interest in it, but price was a big factor in this that they didn't, many of them hadn't paid for an application in the past and it would have to be really justifiable for them to pay for one in the future. The maximum range they would pay was about five to ten dollars. And the younger farmers were a little more resistant to paying than the older farmers as well. Um, when we asked them about their willingness to upload to a security or to a server cloud, they were kind of hesitant. They felt like there might be some security risks, especially with financial and yield data. But they did show interest in sharing some data amongst farm members or farm workers. The second category of questions we talked with them about was distraction level, um, whether or not it's safe to use um, technology while you're working on the farm. And basically they said it depends on what you're doing, if it's safe or not. It depends on a few other factors as well, like the equipment type. If it's something that is steering itself, um, it might be a little more safer than something you might be manually driving. And as one farmer says, once it goes, you're going and you're not going to stop. And the safety also depends on the location. If you're in a yard that might have animals and kids, it's obviously more dangerous than if you're in the middle of a field. The concentration level also affects it, as well as the distraction level, like whether or not they just need to glance at an app or if they need to do a lot of reading. Finally, the, la um, the last category of questions I'll be talking about is an ideal application for farmers, which is basically if they could have anything they needed, what would it be? A lot of them wanted record keeping applications to keep track of weather and wind, um, plant dates and varieties, application rates and seeding rates as well. They were interested in having a GPS with markings, so if they found objects in the field like tiles and rocks, they'd be able to keep track of those in the future. One farmer wanted to be able to calculate job bids on land, and another farmer wanted to be able to keep track of bloodlines and medication with his animals. And Almost all of them wanted to be able to sync things to their main computer. Now Ryan will talk to you a little bit about precision egg data. All right, when we first asked the question about precision egg data, the farmers weren't exactly sure what we were talking about. So we need to probably adjust our question a little bit to make sure that we're a little bit more precise. Um, what we found out they do use though are field monitor, light bar, GIS, GPS, and irrigation logs. Uh, most of most of them pretty much use that um, technology to help steer the tractors and make sure they're on track, uh, applying uh, seed and fertilizer consistent rates exactly where they want it. Um, some of the frustrations they ran, run into though with their existing technology is the signal strength um, from cell phone towers, um, also from like GPS. If they if they're going across the field and they go from one tower to another tower uh, coverage, they'll have a jump in their signal, which can throw off their positioning on their tractor and it can make them be up to like five feet off. Another issue they have is that when updates come out for their applications, sometimes the controls change a little bit from one update to the next. And if you only use your app once for a month at a time and then set, your, set that app aside until the next planting season, for instance, uh, and then if there are changes, you have to relearn how to use the app all over again. Um, 
Another issue was uh, not the interchangeability or the compatibility between platforms, for instance, between Droid and iPhone or from Mac to PC. Um, again, another frustration that we mentioned before was fragility of the devices themselves. They're working around animals, they're working around equipment. Uh, the phones are expensive, so they're hesitant to even use their phones while they're out doing their jobs. Uh, they don't want to break them. Uh, we mentioned to them, to the farmers, voice commands uh, helping get around the fact that their hands are often dirty when they're trying to use their phones, but their environment is usually noisy, so a voice command probably wouldn't work for uh, command for controlling the phones. So after we asked our interview questions, we gave tablets to the farmers. Uh, with the first focus group, each farmer had their own tablet. In the second focus group, they had to share. Um, but we let them look at their at the applications. Um, everybody pretty well figured out how to open the apps, regardless of the technology they currently own. Um, they opened them up really quickly. Uh, we're navigating through them. They had to ask a couple questions uh, from the application developer uh, for figuring out how to use it exactly. But for the most part, people figured out what was going on relatively quickly. Um, they used the watershed application, a tractor ballasting app, and a rock marking app. Um, the questions, like I said, were basically figuring out what the icons meant um, and exactly how to use the, uh, the commands. Uh, the, some of the comments that they had were that they wanted to add legends, uh, basically to explain what the symbols meant inside the app. Uh, it was a little bit confusing to them. Uh, they wanted to be able to mark things other than rocks. Uh, they saw the value of the rock mar marking app, but they also expanded on that, uh, wanting to be able to mark things like the tiles, uh, ditches, um, old wells, and just other things that don't naturally occur in the field. And they also wanted to be able to take notes in the app. So while they had the app up, they wanted to be able to enter more information than what was already just automatically supplied. Um, the, on the water table app, the scale was not real obvious to them. They wanted a little bit of more clarity on the scale for just the topography elevation. Um, the ballasting app, they didn't think would be very useful because most, almost every farmer that we talked to has a tractor set up for a specific job and they, once it's set up, they never adjust it. So the ballasting app just didn't seem very useful at all. Uh, I believe that the watershed app and the rock app both had potential. They had they were a good starting point, but um, had several comments for the developer on how to improve it. Um, overall, the apps were a good start, but just need a little bit of work. And now Rachel will uh, conclude our presentation. Mm -hmm. So in conclusion, we did find that most of the farmers already do have smartphones, but they aren't necessarily using them in their businesses or on the farm for specific jobs. However, they are pretty willing to download applications, especially if they are free, which is definitely good for the applications, especially if JT keeps them free, as they were mentioning. Um, finding a safe distra distraction level is something that's very difficult for the farmers to define, and it is something we probably need to look a little bit more into to determine just how long somebody needs to be paying attention to the application before they have to look away. Um, many farmers do use distractions while working, but either they don't want to mention them or they know it's not necessarily the right thing to do. The farmer's frustrations were typically in signal strength, um, the variance from the applications from year to year, and the fragility of the phones. They did find that our applications were very useful, but they do need a little bit more work to customize and be more useful to them. Finally, they also don't particularly understand cloud servers. Our recommendations are to keep the applications user friendly, which already the group is doing a very good job of doing. Uh, they also need to educate the farmers more about the cloud service and the ease of sharing um, their information. Even though they were mistrustful of it when we asked directly about cloud services, when they were talking about ideal applications, when they were talking about sharing from the phone to the computer or with workers, that is what a cloud sharing service does. And so they need to learn a little bit more about that before they're really going to be willing to share that information. And so if the group educates farmers more about that, 
they're more likely to be more successful with their application. There still needs to be more further research on farmers' needs because there isn't much information out there, and hopefully the needs will, or the research will have more information in a larger demographic than we had. We mostly had younger farmers, and that is the end of our presentation.